In our last Hook of the Week video, we had to do the entire project with the power out because it had snowed and we had a power failure. And later that evening, as it was starting to get dark, we started to get candles out. And we have some of these really nice plumber's candles that are a little bit over an inch in diameter, nice long burning candles. I don't have a candle holder suitable for fitting a candle like that. What a great project. And we're almost going to do today's project with the power out because the power has been out again from midnight till about nine o'clock. Then it was on for a couple hours. Then it was off for another hour. Now it's back on. So hopefully we can get this done because some of this I want to use power tools for just to make it quicker and more efficient. So for our candle holder, I'm going to make the candle cup out of a piece of looks like about 14 gauge sheet metal. Exact size doesn't matter too much. We're not going to use the pipe style candle cup that I've shown several times in the past. So if you want to see that, I'll link to a video on that subject right up here somewhere. For a wax catcher, I've already got some of these bases made up. It's a little bit large, but for the scale of this candle holder, I think that'll make a good wax pan. And again, in that same video that I linked up there, you'll see how I make these. For the base, because I don't want it to be tippy, I've got a piece of half inch plate, or that's about 13 millimeter plate. I've scribed off a square as big as I can get out of this scrap. I'll drill a hole in it and cut this out on the bandsaw. I don't think we need to watch me cut this. You can cut it with an angle grinder. You can cut it with a bandsaw. Heck, you can get it hot and cut it with a chisel if you want to, but that's a lot of work. So to pull this all together, I have a piece of one inch square bar that we'll put tenons on the end of. Mount that up there like that. And we'll put the candle up here like this. And that should make a nice little candle holder for these great big plumber's candles. So let's get started by doing the layout for the candle cup. This is really the most important part of this project. Once you know how to create a sheet metal candle cup like this, you can make just about any kind of candle holder you want. So I just want to find the center of this piece of sheet metal. That's easy to do with a square set. Got two lines that don't quite come together. Right there's my center point. And now I can just trace around this. And that gives me a pretty good idea of what I want my base to be. None of this has to be all that exact at this point, as long as you get it all symmetrical when you're done cutting it out. And I'm just going to put a couple of parallel lines. This will be a very simple candle holder of this style. We'll cut this out and we'll bend the sides up and it'll be open so you can spring it open and closed a little bit if you need to. I marked this over here just because it was easy, but I think I will move my layout to the end so I don't waste as much material. Because it's cold in the shop today, I'm going to go ahead and start with this big plate and that'll help warm the anvil up a little bit. And I just want to put a nice bevel around the edge of this. Lots of things you can do to a base plate, chisel a border around it, you can dish it. And I'll probably dish this one a little bit just so it sits flat. And as you work around this, if you get your bevels even, you end up with a nice kind of mitered corner effect. And I kind of like that. So. Try to get your hammer blows to make those corners come in right to the point. Just a few hammer blows on the top for texture. And this may be all the dishing this needs. Check this on a nice flat bench to make sure it sits flat and doesn't wobble. A little grinding is okay if you need to 
take a high spot off, but heat it up and forge it if you need to do that. You know, this has a little bit of heat in it. I'm going to go ahead and put my touch mark on it. I think I'll put it in at an angle this time. For no particular reason. Other than, I felt like... And I'm going to let that sit on the anvil while I heat the next piece up, and that way it'll help preheat my anvil a little bit better. And the next piece I want to work on is the center post. I'm going to put a tenon on each end, 5 16 tenon. And I don't think I'm going to twist it. You could twist this if you wanted to, but I think I'll just bevel the edges on it, maybe even thin it a little in the middle to give it a little bit of a waste. I'm just going to start this in the guillotine tool with some butchering dies. This will end up being way more tenon than I need in the long run, but it's hard to bite off just a little teeny tiny amount in these guys. That should give us a nice shoulder to work to. I'll we'll go to a set of tenoning dies to define that a little better. At this point, it would certainly be okay to cut the excess off. So I'll just cut the excess off, or part of the excess. By the time we're done, this will probably still be longer than I need. We're going to forge this down to square first, and then we'll go octagon and round. I have a lot less material to deal with because we shortened that. Once those dies start to bounce a little bit, it means they're starting to bottom out. You're getting your square tenon. You see, it's still way more material than we'll need. Now we'll take that to an octagon. And then we can round it up. Now, ideally, we should set this shoulder with a monkey tool, but I don't actually have a monkey tool that size. So I'll have to file it. And it looks like this could use just a hair filing anyways, because it isn't quite exact. Actually, we could use this plate as our monkey tool. Technically, this would be a bolster, not a monkey tool, because of the way you're using it. But same effect. That helps square the shoulder and also makes a custom fit to that shoulder to this base plate. So that works out pretty nicely. Let's straighten that up. That's going to be way too long still. I'll have to trim that off again. But I'm pretty happy with the way it fits down in there. A touch of filing later and we should be just fine. So let's do the other end. And take a little bit less material this time. I don't have to cut as much off. I just stand this up in the corner to help steer around the 
edge so I can get my 90 degree turn lined up properly. Now make sure you don't go too deep with the butcher tool because if you butcher too deep you can create a nick in your tenon and that'll be a weak point. Now you can see with this how ragged that end is because I didn't take as much material. But I think all that will be cut off so we're not going to have to worry about it. But it is much easier to forge the tenon with less material to get between the dies. This one's going to work out just fine. This is going to be harder to clean that shoulder up on, and it definitely needs it. I've got a little gouge in there. Now before I get back to the centerpiece, I want to do a little bit of work on this. I think for this, I want this flat. For my other style of candle holders, I like this little dome effect here. But for this one, I think I want to flatten that out. So I'm just going to grab something real quick and flatten that out in the middle. I think my hammer will fit. That'll be quick and easy. I think that's just going to be a better approach to the whole thing in the long run. I'm going to let that cool. I'll drill that hole out to the same 5 sixteenths I've been working with. Now, since I don't have a proper size monkey tool, I'm going to use this 3 8 one on the cold end and shoulder down to our base plate again as a bolster. And this should work out just fine. Anvil doesn't ring, but that plate sure does. There, now I could use this either direction. So that's three of our parts done. Now we can get back to our little candle cup part, which is the important part. Now ultimately these two sides here, both of the, the wings on this, bend up and they're what round over to hold the candle. I don't want to close it up yet because I need to get in here to set the rivet, but I'll go ahead and start shaping them in this swedge. Now these will bend up eventually, so I don't want to dish any of this part of it. I just want to get this started so I have a little easier job of it later. That's really all I want to do with that for now, I think. Although it does have to fit down in here, so I will need to bend it a little bit. I just don't want to bend it too much. I'm just going to... Use a pair of pliers to bend that up. See if I got enough heat to bend this side up a little bit. Nope. So that's just enough to get that down in there so I get a hammer in there still. I just 
added a little bit of a waste in this, thinned out the center of it under the power hammer. And since I know people get tired of seeing endless power hammer stuff, I just didn't show all that. I'm just going to make sure my shoulders are still good. You can certainly do something similar at the anvil. That's essentially what that's going to look like as we assemble it. I think I want to put the fatter end down. It's a good time to make sure it looks like it's going to stand up straight. Sometimes you got to try it in different positions. That looks a little straighter. So we're going to let this all cool then, and then we'll go to putting it together. We now have our four pieces of the candle holder ready to go. I've decided which end of this I want down. And I'll kind of test it around there to make sure it's really going to sit square. I don't want it to be tipped. Just a little bit wobbly in there, and that's okay. The, the tenon will expand to fill the hole as we put it together. And then those will go like that. Once it's all riveted together, I will finish shaping the candle cup. So let's head over to the vise, and we'll use the torch to set this first tenon. I want to try and get the entire tenon hot so that it will shrink and pull tight better. inch square bar is such a good heat sink it may not ever get hot this is a flush rivet I could have left just a little bit more material for that I think but that's okay it's down in there and it's good and tight to double check with a straight edge and make sure that doesn't stick up even though I can tell this one wouldn't. So that's our first tenon set. Then these two pieces need to go on there together. And this doesn't really matter which way it faces, but if there's an aesthetic reason you want it in line with the, the square, or if you want it diagonal for some reason, just you know, go ahead and set it how you want. But it's better to do it intentionally than it is to uh, be random and then decide you didn't like what you did. I'm going to try and keep this lined up with the flaps. Fortunately, this all bounces a lot. But it would be hard to get the vise at this point. You could put a rivet set down in here, but I want this as thin ahead as possible so that the candle doesn't sit up too high. I'm going to heat this up and then we're going to bring these together. And to do that I've got a bar that's the same diameter as the candle and I'll go put this in the vise. And that's really all there is to it. You can bring them in just a little bit so you have to spring them apart to get the candle in. That completes our candle holder for these nice big inch and a quarter or so candles, the plumber's candles, and that fits pretty good. If it's a little too loose for you, this is light enough, you can actually squeeze that in. 
And that's one of the advantages of this. It's easy to get just the fit you want with the candle holder. And these sheet metal style candle cups like this can be made lots of different ways. They can be made one-sided and wrap all the way around. They can be made with two lobes like this one is, three lobes, four lobes. Some of them look like flowers, some of them look like leaves. They've been chiseled, they've been chased. Lots of things you can do, just depends on how fancy you wanted to get. I just wanted heavy and functional and I really like this look. It's a nice contemporary look for a candle holder. And of course, somebody right now is saying, ooh, is that going to be listed on the Etsy shop? The answer is no. It's going to sit on my mantle just in case there's another power failure. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you'd like to support the channel financially, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free and will remain free. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.